June Odd 8, page 15, questions 72 through 74. Uh, pertain to this information here. Array of monochromatic light having a frequency of 509 times 10 to the 14 hertz. That uh, shouldn't scare you. That's there for one particular reason. It's incident. It hits uh, the interface of air and corn oil at an angle of 35 degrees as shown in the picture. So that's air, that's corn oil. The ray is transmitted through parallel la layers of corn oil and glycerol. Yeah, that happens a lot. Corn oil and glycerol. Mmm, delicious. And then it's reflected from the surface of a plain mirror located at the bottom, of course. Where else would the mirror be? Down at the bottom. And uh, then uh, the ray of light reflects back up through the uh, glycerol layer into the corn oil. And the ray emerges from the corn oil back into the air. Yeah, okay. 72, question. Calculate the angle of refraction of the light ray as it enters the corn oil from the air. Show your work, including the equation with units and substitution. All right, so we know that the angle it hits at, the angle of incidence, is equal to 35 degrees. It's in air, so it has an index refraction of something, and it's going into corn oil, which has an index refraction of something different. So let's look at that. Oh, well, we have a list on our formula sheet of things uh, like air and uh, corn oil, and they have an index as a refraction, absolute index of refraction, but this is only applicable to a very specific frequency of light, which is why they told you the frequency of the light. The index refraction for air is 1.0, and for corn oil, it's um, 1.47. 1.47. As long as I'm here, I'm going to look up the index refraction for glycerol, because that might be useful later. There it is. Also, 1.47. Now in the optics section we have the equation that correlates the index refraction and the angle of incidence with the index refraction and the angle of refraction. So we can write n1 sine theta1 equals n2 sine theta2. And that says that uh, if we're in a material and we hit the boundary at a certain angle, and go into another material, it will bend such that the angle of refraction times the index refraction of the second material will be equal to the angle of incidence times the uh, uh, index refraction of the material. So we know n1, we know n2, we know theta1, we're looking for theta2, the angle of refraction. So we divide both sides of the equation by n2, then we take the inverse sine of both sides, and the inverse sine of the sine of theta is just theta. So the angle of refraction will be equal to n1 sine theta1 divided by n2 index refraction. So now I plug in my knowns. n1 is 1.0, no units, times the sine of 35 degrees, divided by n2, 1.47, no units. Oh, and don't make the mistake of having your calculator in Bradian mode. Make sure it's in degree mode. And when I'm done punching my buttons on my calculator, my angle of refraction is equal to 22.9 degrees. About 23 degrees. Question 73. Explain why the ray does not bend at the corn oil glycerol interface. Well, remember we looked up uh, glycerol and it was 1.47? So, corn oil has an N equal to 1.47. So does glycerol. So, uh, as far as light's concerned, as far as the light is concerned 
it does not see a difference. Therefore, no bending. I don't know how many words it's going to take to express it for you, but basically uh, the index of refraction is uh, the measure of the speed of light in a material. And when that speed changes, then the direction can change. If the speed doesn't change, then the direction doesn't change either. As a matter of fact, uh, it doesn't see a difference. As a matter of fact, that was the key to the invisible man. It was the invisible man. And the idea was he drank a fluid that gave his body the same index of refraction as air. So when light hit him, it just passed right through him. It didn't see any difference between the two of them. So uh, I guess that's the best answer I got for you. All right, now the last one. On the diagram in your answer booklet, use a protractor and a straight edge to construct the refracted ray representing the light emerging at point P. So here's the situation. The light bends here, comes in at about 22, 23 degrees, 22.9, 23 degrees. It's going to come down here and hit at, um, you know what? Alternate interior angles. This is going to be about 23 degrees. And then it's going to come off here at 23 degrees. I like the geometry. Which makes this 23 degrees. And so now it's going from N1, the sine of this angle, going into N2, the sine of this angle. You know N1, that's the corn oil, 1.47. You know, air, that's 1.00. You know, the sine of the angle, it's uh, probably still on your calculator, but it's 22.9 degrees. So you got to calculate this an ang angle. And you know what? It's going to be 35 degrees. There's this symmetry thing going on. So well, let's do this one. So now I've got to make this uh, 35 degrees. I'm going to use the normal as my zero point and just line up my protractor with the normal that's drawn. And so I've got that lined up. So now I go out to the uh, edge of the protractor. Uh, 20 degrees, 25, 30, 35 degrees right here. And here's where the straight edge part of my protractor comes in handy. And this angle is going to be 35 degrees. Now we'll get you your points. I'm going to try to fit in these last two, 75 and 76. They both pertain to this nuclear equation. This thing hits that, it turns into that, that, and that. There's a list here showing you what those different things are. Determine the difference between the total masses of a proton plus lithium, the proton plus lithium, and uh, the total masses of the two alpha particles, a pair of these. So what's the difference? So I've got this thing, which has got a mass there, plus that thing. You add the two of them together. Uh, that's equal to the total uh, sum of that mass. And that total mass turns out to be 8.023.83. And they want you to compare that to the mass of two of these things. Get out the calculator. Actually, I don't think I need a calculator. That would be 8. 0 0.00520 and now subtract this from that question 76 determine the energy in mega electron volts produced by this reaction there's a conversion factor on the front um, one universal mass unit converts directly into look at this 931 MeV so if that's my conversion factor, 931 MeVs is 1U. I can multiply that by my 0 0.01863 U's. And it'll tell me what my answer and MeVs. And it turns into about 17.3 uh, MeVs. Yep, that works. That exam is done.